G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a Desert Eagle. This is a giant mag-fed hand cannon of a gun, and it comes with custom sounds and animations to go along with it. Look at the textures. This has got the chrome paints on it right now. There are more, but this thing looks absolutely stunning. The uh, detail here is enormous, and this is law-friendly, by the way, because these things existed in Fallout 2 and possibly Fallout 1. I don't know, I wasn't really paying attention when I looked at the list, but anyways, let's get into receivers. Firstly, we've just got the light bolt, heavy bolt, reinforced mechanism, factory condition, as you can tell, as we are going up and higher throughout these receivers, we're getting slightly better damage. Now, the fast trigger is kind of interesting because it makes a rate of fire zero, which is effectively a Jacob's pistol back in uh, Borderlands 2. It fires as fast as you can pull the trigger, but I'm finding that it fires fast enough without all of that nonsense, and the recoil is going to make it pretty much impossible to use with the um, rate of fire as it is anyway, so probably just best to go with higher grade parts and not take too much of a second thought about that. You can have an extended barrel if you want to push that range out a little bit, which is what I'll do, or you can have just a standard barrel, which, you know, makes it look like the uh, classic deagle looking thing, so, you know, for aesthetics reasons, I like that one better, but that one's better statistically, so we'll go with that, and we can have a weighted grip to reel in some of that recoil at the cost of weight. Who would have thought it? Anyways, so you can have iron sights or tritium iron sights or the glow sights. You can have them in very different colors. Blue, green, red, yellow, white and stuff. You can also have a little reflex on the front. This little thing here is, I guess, a tactical rail, but I don't know, it doesn't look like a tactical rail to me, but that's fine. You can also have a Russian cobra sight. Or is it a cobra? Who even knows? You can have an XPS holographic. Uh, this one, which I've used on an M60, uh, in Battlefield 3 back in the day. Yeah, I don't know, like a 3.4 times zoom. This one appears to be somewhat of a reflex sight, though. We've also got the uh, six times scope, which, you know what? We'll be using this at some point, I reckon, but we'll leave that on the uh, shelf for now. Let's just go with... Uh, let's go with a reflex sight. Why not? We'll just have a really tricked out one, I suppose. You can put a compensator on this to increase the recoil control a little bit more, which is helpful. Or you can put a tactical suppressor or a heavy suppressor, which will increase our range because of the extra barrel space, which is really good attention to detail in terms of how firearms would ought to be working like. It also increases the damage thanks to Ace Operator. Why not? We have a really long deagle, an extended deagle here. 433 damage, but we're not done with the damage just yet. Of course, I could chuck on a legendary effect to make this even better, but we're going to skip over that. You can chuck a flashlight or a laser sight under the barrel. The laser sight improves hit by accuracy. The flashlight replaces the Pip-Boy flashlight, so if you don't like that giant orb of light that surrounds you all the time and you want to have a little more of a tactical approach to your flashlights on your weapons, then that's a good choice for that. You can have a 44 Magnum conversion if you don't have the 50 Action Express rounds to actually use this, but you can find all of this and the gun being able to craft that on a camera suit workbench, so there's really no reason not to, uh, you know, get yourself this. It's relatively easy to find, provided you've got the perks and the uh, materials to make it. You can have high velocity, which decreases the uh, damage, but increases the range by quite a massive margin there. You can have high pressure, which um, increases the rate of fire. Again, brings it down to zero, so it's doing what that other receiver that I talked about earlier is doing before, but you can have the best receiver also doing that. That gives us extra range and accuracy as well. Armor piercing... Uh, lowers the damage, but it'll perform better against armored targets like a gunner's. You can have heavy rounds, which increases the rate, worsens the range, but increases the damage. So, you know, if you want to have something a little bit more of a closer range, uh, I guess, rhino stopper, then you can chuck the heavy rounds in it. And you can have high explosive rounds. Whether this actually works with a suppressor, I'm not actually sure, but we'll keep the high explosive rounds for another one. Right now, I'm thinking of going high velocity because... That range we get out of that. Or actually, maybe... Let's go with this one. We'll leave the high-velocity ones for the one using the uh, scope, I think. That would be a uh, delightful choice, I would say. Anyways, there's our long-extended digger with a laser sight and... Well, with a lot of unnecessary attachments, but... Screw it! Let's go! Also, you can change the reticule of your reflex sight. I probably won't bother doing that, but it's something you can uh, check out in your own time if you decide to download this mod. Here are the colors. Oil spill is kind of trippy because depending on what angle you have, it'll have a completely different color. So, wowee. Also, it has a John John reference. After all, everything can be bought and sold for the right oil. Oh, it's a classic John John meme. Also, yeah, that's it. Let's uh, shoot stuff, I guess.
Okay, so here we are in the peaceful Gunners Plaza, and it will be peaceful when I'm done shooting everything that moves in here. And this is what the Extendo Deagle looks like in first person. And having a look at this thing in third person, just got to bring the camera right out so you can see the bloody thing. Yep, that's what it looks like. Uh, just the basic sort of uh, pistol holding animations. This one is the golden one with the uh, right tritium iron sights there, or glow sights there. It's got the explosive rounds on it. And this one is got that oil desert oil thingy. I don't know what that's all about. It's also got a scope. It's a medium scope for six times zooming in, and it is completely steady. That's interesting. Anyways, this is Camille. She is a bounty hunter from Nuka World because somebody, three in fact, uh, naughty raiders run out from their respective gangs so she's got to go and track them down and make an example of them so more people don't leave and you know nuka world becomes less stable as there's less manpower to keep the bloody thing running anyways let's get started on these gunners so right now we're going for a stealth gunslinger approach here and it is working fantastically well thanks to the use of this suppressor Sometimes you can't shoot through this little fencing here, so it's just easier just to go to a wide opening where you know that it's there, and then start shooting there. This thing's hip by accuracy is pretty good. Obviously, we've got that augmented from the, uh, the, uh, perk called Steady Hands, so it's going to be even better than usual. But even still, I, I'm thinking that it's fairly reliable. Some gunners made the firing looping bug sound, so we'll have to kill them quickly. And if we go reload this thing before we engage this guy and spam on the trigger, we can see what kind of recoil we get out of this. It's quite a lot. So if you are, you know, wanting to spam the trigger, you got to be up nice and close and personal and pull down on whatever aiming instrument you are using to control that recoil a bit. But the DPS is there to uh, clear out what you are shooting at kind of easily. Let's get started with the explosive one. Oh, a basic gunner. Bless your little cotton socks. Let's continue with this, I bet, I guess. That's feeling good to fire. The explosives aren't exactly the uh, legendary explosive rounds, and I'm thinking I'm just hitting that gunner with the straight explosives there for like 50 or so damage. So, yeah, we can stack that as well as the bullet damage if we actually manage to get a hit here. And look at that. This thing's got crazy recoil, but why are you punching me? You know, for a gunner, you've got a suspicious lack of guns there. And honestly, this might be a gun through, <laughs> I guess, option here. Let's do that. And three for you. And look at that AP usage. Just like normal pistols in this game. If you've got less AP, oh, it just makes it just fires at less AP than standard rifles, which means hand cannons like this are extremely, extremely powerful in bats, which you know makes revolvers work quite well when normally they'd fire very, very slowly compared to you know automatic rifles. So that's interesting. Let's switch over to the scoped one because this is a totally appropriate time to use it. Just like the um, the one that I was using first off, this one's also got a suppressor. It's also got the uh, high velocity round so we can actually snipe from this thing at range better. I would have, I originally planned to have those rounds, but seeing as the suppressor doesn't offset range like it usually does for balance reasons, Look at you hopping around like that. There we go. Finally managed to get the hit in here. There we go. Fared better against that fella. And that might be it for whatever gunners are in Gunners Plaza. So what I might do is uh, we'll keep this snipe train going on with the uh, digger with a scope. And there's the uh, animations for sprinting. Bashing is just normal. So, yeah. That's kind of it for Gunners Plaza. Let's take this out on the gauntlet because I haven't been there in a few days. I think Camille's ready to prove her worth. All right, so here we are outside the gauntlet and um, Gerald's just going to get his ult up and charged by attacking these gunners. They seem to be uh, somewhat aware of them now and these guys are definitely aggroed towards me. But honestly, they've got bigger problems than me right now. So I'll just leave them be and we'll take out these raiders because this is generally the first step. There we go, there's a gun bash kill. Fairly rare in Fallout 4, but you can still do it because you can get random crits half the time, which it'd be cool if you could, you know, bolster that with luck, but yeah, bashing seems a little bit more like an afterthought in this. I guess there's no, um, 
there's no random criticals that you can score randomly because they took that mechanic out. But you can use uh, Overdrive to get that effect, which makes it an extremely powerful cam. That doggo just died, but he, he didn't, though. He just fell over and was having, like, a, a cardiac arrest thing. Now, Super Mutant Warlords, these guys are tough, and we might want to go for headshots against these guys because they will take that damage. Luckily for me, I've got plenty of range on this thing, so if I just want to shoot them in the head from back here, then we're all good. That non-scope spray will definitely help. We can go for center mass because that guy is just a basic super mutant. Now, despite this thing being completely steady and everything, it's not going to make a, the best sniper in the game because I can't use the sniper perk because obviously you need the uh, rifle keywords to do that. So, you know, it's not going to be the best in slot, but it's certainly making a very strong case to be a very powerful handgun sniper type weapon. You can put scopes on uh, 44 magnums in this game, so I guess it's not too much of a stretch, but you know, it's taking it to its logical conclusion with a mag-fed hand cannon, right? And the Deagle with using bigger bullets than 44 magnum. I like to call that Doctor Who vision because it looks like the intro of Doctor Who with all of the traces going around you. Also, that's kind of weird how panic firing causes it to spiral out of control like that. Because if I picked up and fired that minigun, it wouldn't have nearly that much spread. And you'd think that a super mutant would be fairly decent at controlling the uh, recoil of a weapon like that since they're such, a, such big lads. Let's go for a critical here, see what kind of damage we can do out of that. 853. That's probably not going to be enough to do too much most of the time. We've got him disarmed. That's another thing you can do with uh, the gunslinger weapon class in this game. You can disarm. So you can't knock down, but potentially against some targets that are attacking or a range, you can disarm them, which is always good stuff. At worst, it's going to uh, make them go behind cover to grab their weapon back, but at best, it's just going to stun them for a bit, allowing you to get easy follow-up shots. So, we'll continue the uh, snipe run against uh, old mate Gerald here, because we'll give Swan a rest, because I was going to just killed his ass as easily as you'll see here. Hopefully. Hopefully, I don't make an ass out of myself. The good thing about a target like him is that we can spam the trigger basically as much as possible, and we're probably going to hit. We've got a decent chance to hit. I'm more worried about his uh, mutant friends coming along, and that guy's legendary, so we'll have to put a couple more bullets into him. And kind of got to break his pathing at the moment. See, the enemies in this game, they go kind of easy on you, because they know where I am, that's for sure, but... You know, they still got to abide by their pathing rules. So if I jump on these rocks, it'll completely spoof him as it did there. That's okay. Enemies weren't supposed to be this big in the game, so we can't fault Bethesda for uh, Swan's or Gerald's dopey pathing thing. Let's switch back over to the Long Deagle and uh, quickly shred that guy with some fire like that. How's the wrist going? She doesn't seem to be too badly in shape. It's not swollen or anything, so I guess we'll continue. Okay, so I really haven't given this much of a crack using uh, the uh, vats on this. So what I might do is we'll take out the lobsterman over here who sits here vibing in his personal bath all day. Let's uh, let's break this cycle of madness. We'll, we'll do a critical up first, and if we can hit him up with a secondary critical for 2064 damage. Thank you, Concentrated Fire. And it looks like the time for sneak critting is over, but that's okay because we're still getting a fairly decent amount of damage on him, even from back here. Now, what I could probably do now is just uh, jump in the water and then sit here for a moment because he's not going to know where I am. And I might be in caution right now because he spat at nothing, which means he's probably panic firing. So if we just re this over here... And maybe take you out, just one shot for you, and then I'll carry a little bit of a gun through bonus into shooting at your dumbass. We might actually do pretty well here. Okay, that's camera, settle down, mate. Let's go for another one, I reckon. There we go, 2400 there. A little tactical use of gun through. And 768 looks like the uh, VATS run uh, in terms of its uh, ability to sneak critical is over. And we're now missing shots because. I guess the uh, penetrator perk has trouble with water, but again, we're just dodging him by taking a little bit of a swim back here. 
don't worry, we teach all of the angels to swim. It's a very important skill to have, especially if you're in the Commonwealth, because there's a lot of water here, and the fact that we can avoid the radiation is even better. We don't even know how we do it. They just do it. Totally canon. You can just avoid the radiation. No, not the torso. Looks like he's going to be a little bit more privy to my ability to immediately cloak there, but... Yeah, this thing's slowing right down if I'm not getting the snit critical and... Huh, looks like there's been more creatures around and let's see here. Okay, I think he's lost me again, but... Like, I know I'm taking time just, you know, having a swim is kind of pointless seemingly, but... There's reason for this, and that is because... Uh, if I can hit this guy with a snook attack critical, it'll be a lot quicker than hitting them... Like that. Oh, that's a very useful stagger to have. I got a couple more sneak criticals along with that. And we can carry that gun free bonus into this. Let's go over to this. And wow, that was a weak hit. I might have been sprinting at the time because uh, moving target is a little bit like that. So I got a little bit of damage resistance from that. It looks like the iron sights, or the low sights in this case, are going to be slightly more efficient on the vast AP, which is not usually the, uh, the way around. Maybe the, uh, the little micro aim point thingy is, uh, technically marked as a scope or something, that's what I'm thinking. We'll keep on staggering him. And I do like how this thing does stagger him because, uh, I don't know, it feels like it makes sense having a, uh, you know, a, a pistol a handgun firing these giant rounds, you know, cause a little bit of damage because if it didn't throw enemies around like ragdolls, well, it wouldn't feel like a deagle now, would it? We'll go for a critical here. Eh, we'll get using the criticals. Oh, we managed to get three times explosive damage on that. Was that like catching up? Don't really know. If we've got one more VATS crit going on, no, we don't. I was gonna immediately crit that so we can kill him, but. It looks like it's about lights out for the Lobsterman. So we'll take him out. And now he's, uh, sent, he, we sent him to JV Jones Lake Locker. And there's like a, a, a mile like a baby who keeps splashing. Stop doing that. Okay, that's never going to stop. So I think you get the point that there was the Deagle. The IMI 50 AE Deagle. It's uh, not the first Deagle mod I've actually uh, utilized on the channel. In fact, one of the first mods I ever did did with uh, Fallout 4 was using a Deagle, so, you know, a little bit of a blast from the past. Back then, I only had one one single angel character, but we've, we've made a few more over the years, and yeah, Camille's number 16, would you believe, so, you know, one more to the private army. If you'd like to see this thing in your game, check out the description. If there's an Xbox uh, port of this, I'll have that linked as well. I'll have a little bit of a Google search, see what I can scrounge up, but if there isn't, I'll put on some um, mods that you could you know, get deagles from, like, alternative mods that also have deagles, because, you know, as an, as an astoundingly popular weapon, there's going to be a couple of different iterations of uh, this thing and other modders' takes on it, so be on the lookout for that. Also, check out the links in the description for Loot Crate, and if I have my Discord there this time, that'd be good. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to vote on the next mod you want to see in my Discord.